Hey guys, it's your boy Tristan, and um, welcome to a GameMaker 3D tutorial. In this one, we're just going to be making some basic movement. To show you what I had in mind, I'll, I'll show you like sort of the finished product. Um, I guess we'll get started from there. So it's going to be a first person, not a shooter because there's no guns, but it'll it'll be like a first person perspective 3D game. And as you can see, I've just like ripped off the Minecraft textures. I don't actually play Minecraft, but it's the first thing I thought of. So, um, as you can see, you can jump in this fog, and um, there is lighting, but I have it disabled at the moment because it's a bit weird. I'll probably figure it out later. So, yeah. Oh, and there's like a sprint and field of view and all that, and a mini map. So, that's what we'll be learning in this series. Obviously, the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make the 2D version of what you just saw um, and that is just to get us started and then from there it's actually quite easy to make it 3D but the advantage of starting 2D is that you can do collision testing really easily and you can just get everything sorted out really quickly so I'm going to go ahead and make a sprite for our player yep there we go so that's my little arrow and um, it's facing to the right because Game Maker draws its angles from the positive x-axis, and that's obviously pointing towards the positive x-axis. So when we rotate this thing, um, by the way, clicking center so that we can rotate it quite nicely, when we rotate it, it will be facing the proper orientation. And just really quick as well, we're going to make a, um, we're just going to make a sprite for our solid object. And uh, that'll just be like a solid square, doesn't need to be centered because it won't be rotating. And now I guess we'll just make some objects for these sprites. Nothing will go in them yet. But I do want to note that I'm calling this parent solid. Now I'm doing that because the main reason being is this will be the parent object to all the other children that will also be solid objects in the game. So we can have a bit of flexibility there. And all the, all the other ob solid objects in the game will inherit uh, properties from that one parent solid object. Now we'll just make a room. And I'm going to make mine quite square. Make it 60 FPS. Put in our player object and then drop in some... Uh, just some solid objects. Alright, back to the objects now. First of all, we're going to open up our player object and we're going to go create execute some code. Now what's going to go in here? Well, we're just going to set some uh, some initialization variables, first of all, and there's going to be a couple constants as well, so we'll start with the constants. First one is sensitivity, sensitivity, yeah, that's going to be equal to 0 0.1. Now the idea behind these constants is that you can change them yourself and um, you can get your desired outcome, but I found that these ones are actually, these, these values are quite good. Alright, so let's explain what I've got here. So sensitivity, that's going to be for our mouse movements. So how much does our mouse movement affect um, what happens in the game? This is max speed, pretty self-explanatory, that's how fast the character can get. This is acceleration, so I've abbreviated to X, but I'll just call it acceleration. Now these ones here this is forwards backwards velocity right so this that's the velocity where you're moving forwards and backwards in a straight line and this one here i've called rl vel for right left velocity so that's going to be like your strafing and these are just initialized to zero at the moment so we'll go back and visit those in the step event all right let's set up um let's set up the mouse controls so how does the mouse affect what happens in our game Okay, so basically what we have here is our, our direction is being varied by a factor of this thing here. Now, what is this? Well, this won't make too much sense until we center the mouse to the middle of the screen. So, now that we have our mouse locked to the center of the screen, that's what this does. This makes a little bit more sense. So, display mouse get x. That basically returns the position of the mouse on the screen minus half the display width so the x-coordinate 
of the center of the screen. Every time we try to move the mouse and it gets snapped back to the center of the screen, it adds that much to direction. So direction is being incremented by how much we're trying to move our mouse out of the center of the screen in the x direction. And of course we're multiplying this by sensitivity. So obviously the higher the sensitivity, at the moment it's 0 0.1, but the higher the sensitivity, the more drastic this direction change is. Let's move on to the keyboard controls. Now this, this, this line of code might seem a bit strange to you if you're not familiar with the idea of GameMaker basically treating booleans as if they were integers. So that's, that's something that GameMaker can do. And a, a lot of other programming languages do it as well, but you have to specify that you want it to be treated like an integer. GameMaker just treats booleans like integers. So we have forward backward keys equals this boolean minus this boolean. This one is going to be one if we're holding W. It'll be zero if we're not holding W. This one will be one if we're holding S and zero if we're not holding S. So overall we have FB keys equaling either one if we're holding W and not holding S. It could be zero if we're not holding either of them or we're holding both of them. Or it could be minus one if we're just holding S and not holding W. So this gives us quite a neat little way of determining what we're pressing and it's stored in a nice little variable that's going to be either one, zero or minus one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing for right and left. Okay, so now that we have our keyboard check variables, they're only temporary variables because we're only gonna be using them for this step here. What, we're, what we can do is we can have two separate velocity variables, forward backward velocity and right and left velocity. And these are gonna be incremented each time by their respective key variables times the acceleration. So basically, forward backward velocity will be incremented by whatever the value of this thing here is times the acceleration each step. Mind you, acceleration in our case is about 0 0.1. But now that we have this, there's no way to stop the velocities from getting too fast. We, we want to limit the speed. Okay, so now that I've written it, let's talk about what it is. So we have another definition of our velocity variables, but this time they're equal to something to do with this clamp function. Now, what does clamp do? The first argument of clamp is the value that you want to clamp. The second argument is the minimum value that it's allowed to be. The third argument here is the, uh, the maximum value that you want this value to be. And um, it actually, it just returns this value clamped in between these. That's why we have to set it equal to the value. So kind of confusing, but it's, it's really quite easy. You just have to remember to actually set it equal to the value you want to clamp. So that's that's a pretty neat way of limiting um, something like speed or, or um, angles or something like that. So that's a nice little function. Next, you'll probably notice that there's no way that we can decelerate and sort of stop um, if we're not pressing the button. So we're gonna do that now. So here we have two if statements that will occur every step. So every step, GameMaker will check if this condition is true. So if our forward backward keys is zero, so we're not pressing W or S. Oh, I just realized I have a typo up here. Um, that should be a D. Okay, so GameMaker will check, is this condition satisfied? If, if FB keys equals zero, that means that we're not pressing W or S. And if the absolute value of our forward and backward velocity is greater than our acceleration. So, so in other words, our forward backward velocity takes a value that is indeed greater than the acceleration. It's not like it's just started accelerating, it's, it's already well into its speed, if that makes sense. If I were to have this greater than or equal to zero, it would still work, but there is a slight glitch where often this deceleration can tend to overshoot and you, you get some drifting that, that you kind of have to like realign with pressing buttons. So I'm just gonna set this equal to acceleration. 
which is uh, 0.1. So it's pretty much zero. Now, what this line here does, so we've established that we're not pressing any keys, but we're still moving. So this line here ensures that we decrement our forward backward velocity by a factor of acceleration, but it's also taking in consideration what direction are we already traveling in. So if this if this sign of FP velocity is one, that means that we're traveling up. So we want to minus a positive version of acceleration. But if this sign of FP vel was minus one, which means that we're going down, we want to subtract a negative version of acceleration, or in other words, we want to add acceleration so we come back up and the same thing here for right and left keys and right and left velocity so that'll decelerate our object if we're not pressing any keys okay finally well almost finally we we've been talking about front and back velocities and right and left velocities but that's not something that game maker can typically use game maker deals with x's and y's so we need to translate our velocities into something game maker can use Okay, so this is possibly the hardest concept to grab. Basically what we're doing here is we're taking x velocity. This is a new variable and we're setting it equal to our forward backward velocity in in the direction, but only the x component of that direction. So we're taking the amount forward velocity fo forward backward velocity in the x direction. So if you wanted to look at a diagram, I've got the docs open here. So say for example, this is our character and we want to move this much, this len, this length, but it's diagonal. So we want to set, we want to increment x by a factor of length de x, which is the x component in the direction and of length len. In terms of what we're doing here, it, it's, it's really not too complicated, but also we want to add another component. So this is the direction of right and left velocity, but in a different direction. This, this direction is perpendicular to our forward and backward direction. This is minus 90 degrees. So, so you can imagine if this vector here was our direction, this is our direction minus 90 and it's perpendicular. So you can imagine if we are walking forward and backwards along this direction, it only makes sense that we would be strafing or moving left and right along this direction. So yeah, we're going to be adding these two vectors together. The x component of our forward and backward velocity in the direction, plus the x component of our right and left velocity in the perpendicular direction. And I think that makes sense. But see, we're also doing it for the y velocity. So instead of using the x components, we're using the y components, but everything else is exactly the same. So now that that is done, we can get down to the moment of truth. Now, we're not doing um, collision checking in this episode, that'll be in the next one. But the main idea is that we just want to see if our movement works. So let's start the game up. So basically, this is quite self-explanatory. We've just gone x plus equals x velocity and y plus equals y velocity. So let's take a look. Okay, so one thing that I forgot to do... Actually, there's a couple of things that I could have done. First thing being, we want to draw... So we want to draw our object just temporarily so that we can see what's going on, but we want to make it drawn in such a way that its angle is direction. But the reason we can't just go... The reason we can't do image angle equals direction is because image angle itself as a function will change uh, the collision mask of the sprite. and we don't actually want to be rotating the collision mask because that creates all sorts of unexpected things when collision testing. The collision masks should never change, but if we are rotating the sprite, we can just do this and that'll, that'll leave the mask alone. So that's what we're going to be doing. And the next thing that we could do is just really quick. I'm not even going to code it. Um, we're just going to go, if you press escape, uh, we'll just end the game. 
So now, as you can see, we are rotating our, uh, um, our little character, and he does move, which is good. He moves forwards and backwards, and he moves left and right, which is um, which is quite good. So that's what that's what this is what we wanted to achieve this 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 episode. Um, <clears throat> there are no collisions yet, so look forward to that in the next part.